Hey yo, what's up guys, welcome to today's video. Today I will be doing a Calyx versus tier list. So I'll basically be putting all these junglers into the five different categories here on screen. And I'll be giving you guys some tips and tricks on how to win these matchups. So um, let's just go right ahead. So we have Calyx in the top and we're gonna be uh, putting all these junglers right here into the five different categories and I'll be uh, giving you guys some tips on when and how you can win these matchups. So first up we have a Mumu. So a Mumu is a tank only for the most part. Calyx can like 1v1 tank donors. Only issue is that, that for the most part tank donors are too tanky to just like instantly kill. So for the most part a Mumu will be able to become tanky enough to tank Calyx's damage until his team is gonna help a Mumu out. So, you can kill a Mimi pre-6 if you find him on a jungler camp, especially if his Q is on cooldown. But I suggest fighting him in post-6 with Q evolve, because that's just the easiest way to be dueling a Mimi. Then we have Camille. Camille is not really seen as a jungler anymore. She's more of a top laner since her E nerf. So, yeah, we don't really include Camille in this one. Then we have Diana. Diana is not really a jungler either. If you see Diana jungle for whatever reason, you can pretty much duel her at level 6 and post 6. So, yeah, you can pretty much always fight against uh, Diana. Then we have Echo, and against Echo, I suggest fighting him post level 6. I suggest doing Blue Smite. Uh, reason being that you basically just want to try to burst Echo before he presses ulti. So Red Smite seems kind of useless. Since we just want to do as much damage as possible in the shortest amount of time. So... Yeah, post 6, Q evolve into Echo with Blue Smite, and you should be able to fight him. Just try to um, E out of his stun. I think just not getting hit by his stun is probably the most important thing. Maybe using E to dodge his Q as well could be an easy way to be dueling uh, Echo. But um, yeah. On to the next one, we have Elise. And. Uh, Elise is probably, in my opinion, the most difficult jungler for Calyx to deal with. Reason being that Elise is an early game jungler, so she will have her power spike before Calyx. Calyx's power spike, in my opinion, is for mid game. Or at least post level 6, where he gets his first uh, evolve. And the second reason is that whenever Elise goes into spider form, her spiderlings, the small spiders, uh, will remove your isolation, so you won't actually deal damage to her. The only few tips I have is you can buy Tiamat, and this is the only matchup I buy Tiamat into. You can buy Tiamat to Tiamat the Spiderlings and remove them, so you then get Isolation and actually start dealing damage to these. Or you can just straight up build Defensive, and then hopefully your team will do more stuff, so you basically play around your team, and you just don't die to Elise. So, yeah, that's pretty much like my best tips and tricks uh, for Elise. I don't usually win against at least myself, so I can't really help you guys out too much in this matchup because it's just a terrible matchup for Calyx. But uh, luckily, Elise is not being played too much, not even in uh, D1 Master Grandmasters. Uh, from what I've seen, at least, I've only faced it like a couple of times, so it shouldn't be too bad. But yeah, Elise is a really bad matchup, and in my opinion, the worst one. You have Eve, and against Eve, you basically just want to play aggro in the early game. You'll beat Eve pre 6. Once you have a lead over e e uh, pre-6, you'll also win post-6. So you basically want to try to contest your jungle camps, contest Skullcrap, try to get ahead. You're an XP, preferably you want to kill Evelyn. And uh, yeah, then you pretty much just want to snowball this matchup out of control. A few tips I can say is try to duel Elise from level 3 once you have your E up. And just... Basically kill her once and then snowball from that. A few items that you could buy would be... I always do blue smite into, into this matchup because I like to just snowball on this guy. You could buy Merc Threats, you could buy Hexinger and you can even buy QSS. If Eve for whatever reason gets ahead early game, you can also buy a Sweeper. And yeah, you pretty much just wanna... Try to kill her before she gets her charm combo off. Because the thing is that if Eve has a lead pre-6, she'll basically one-shot you with her charm EQ or QE into ult combo. 
if you don't have any MR. So if she's ahead, I'll build MR. If you are ahead, I'll just straight up build Tefali and keep on trying to find Eve and just kill her. So that's pretty much it. Then we have Fiddlesticks. Uh, Fiddlesticks is mainly seen as a support, but um, if I had to put him somewhere, I would say that post level 6, a Calyx will win. You can win against Fiddlesticks pre 6 too. It's just the fact. That for the most part, pre six you want. For the most part, if you want to get on top of fill six, you want to use your E pre six. Uh, whereas fill six will then just fear you away, and then that's pretty much it. Like that's pretty much the interaction. Like you jump in, you EQ, maybe you get one auto off. He's like low on HP, then he fears you and he runs away. You will basically never be able to kill Fiddle unless you like surprise him by going like killing him on a jungle camp, where he used his like Q E and W maybe. And then you can kill him. Uh, but for most part, I like to buy a QSS really early into Fiddlesticks, just so I can remove the fear from Fiddlesticks. So I can use EQ auto, he'll fear me. I'll go into Q, like I'll pop QSS, and I can then Q auto again, and he's dead pretty much. So I like going QSS like fairly early into this matchup. Sometimes I'll buy this after my jungle item Serrated the Dirk or jungle item Duskblade, and then go for QSS. So that's a way to. Uh, Counter fill the sticks pretty much. <clears> then <throat> we have Gragas. Gragas received some buff very recently, I think the most recent patch, but Gragas is still a really bad jungler. You shouldn't really be too afraid of Gragas. You'll pretty much out duel him at level 6. You just have more damage output. So if he decides to duel you, for the most part, just win with Q Evolve. So nothing much there. Then we have Graves. Um, Graves is a jungler that was really good last season in Season 8, but in Season 9 he just doesn't seem to fit too well in the current jungle meta. And the jungle meta is just swift, like swapped into kind of more like early game aggression, like Kekra and Rek'Sai. We have some tanks that are really strong. Um, and they're just better champions now than Graves. But against Graves, you can try to duel him from level 3 to level 6. The only issue with this is the fact that he will still be able to kite you out since you don't have your ult for the bonus movement speed and resetting your passive auto attack that will slow him. And then the fact that he can dash and he can smoke screen to kind of like reposition himself and kite you out fairly easily. So what I suggest is going blue smite and tab ice into graves and using Q evolve and then I would pretty much use my EQ auto into ult, reset my passive, and then auto queue him again, and then he should pretty much be uh, be dead. I don't really suggest fighting him pre six because he can just kite you out basically. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Then we have Ivern. Ivern is pretty much a free win for Calyx. Reason being that Ivern is a support jungler, which means that Ivern is not actually tanky. Ivern just has peel items to shield and like heal and like help out his laners. Um, for Calyx, this means that you pretty much can always duel him. You can always go in and fight him. And once you have a lead, you can keep on like killing him. For the most part, I find Ivern really, really easy to kill for whatever reason. Even if Ivern uses Daisy, which I rarely see Ivern players do in Diamond and Grandmasters, like in between that elo, they just never use Daisy for whatever reason to remove your isolation. So you pretty much just straight up kill them and they're so squishy because they're, they are they do not use jungle item. They'll for the most part go for like Mobis and they'll go for like redemption early item which gives like absolutely no armor. So they're really squishy and it's basically like carry jungler in terms of stats, like magic resist and armor stats. But you, they have no damage. It's like they're only peel. So if they're by themselves, you just straight up kill them. So uh, pretty much a free win for uh, Calyx in my opinion. Then we have Hecarim. Hecarim is a really good genre right now in solo queue. He is top tier. I think he's in between like top 5 and top 10 genres right now for the most part. And um, for the most part, I see Hecarim players do... Ignite Red Smite with Conquer, which means that they are really strong for dueling, which they are. Um, my suggestion is that 
for the most part, I would try to avoid him pre-6. And then once you hit level 6, if Hecarim has his E on cooldown, you can pretty much kill him. So if he uses his E on the jungle camp or a gank or just to move around the map faster, you can pretty much kill him. If he doesn't use his E, for the most part, a Hecarim would just use his E to run away. If for whatever reason Hecarim is into you, then either he's fed and he's actually able to duel you, or he's not fed, not respecting you, and he's just inting. So that's pretty much how this works. I suggest going for. You can go for a red smite. I usually go for red smite if Hecarim is strong or if I don't have a lead. If I have a lead myself, I would usually do blue smite. I would do QW evolve, and the W evolve will help slowing Hecarim, which means his engage and his damage output will be weaker. And you can pretty much straight up kill him. So, post 6, you'll win this matchup. Then we have Jarvan. Jarvan is another solid jungler. I would say he's like above average jungler right now. He can do some cheesy ganks with level 2 EQ. But um, for the most part, Jarvan will either go for electrocute and assassinate people. Or he will go conquer Black Cleaver, kind of like Bruiser build. You can beat Jarvan post 6, you can also beat him pre 6, but the main thing about Jarvan is the fact that you just want to dodge his EQ. Because the thing about Jarvan is, when he uses his EQ, that's both his engage and disengage. So if you can dodge Jarvan EQ with either using your old movement speed, or if you're not good enough for that, then you can use your E or flash if needed. If you then dodge his EQ combo, he only has his ult and auto attack left. While you have pretty much a higher damage Q on a very low cooldown, and your auto attacks will deal more damage. So, the, mo like, the most important thing is just dodging Jarvan's EQ and you'll win this 1v1. You can win pre-6, but I suggest doing it post-6, just because Q is always so strong. Then we have Jax, an L jungler. He is mainly seen in top lane. And I think Jax top lane is stronger than Jax jungle, but um, pre-6, Jax will beat you. Reason being that his E cancels your auto attacks. So he's really, really strong pre-6. Post-6 though, what you can do is you can go for Red Smite and Tab Eyes, and then your Q will still go through Jax's E, because it's not an auto attack. So whenever Jax presses E, I would use a Q, I'd go into my ult, go in stealth, try to walk outside of the stun range, and then I would, if I have my E off cooldown, I'll jump on top of him again, use my EQ auto, and then he should pretty much be dead. Main thing is that you just want to time your ulti by the time Jax is either starting his E or about to stun. So either you'll use it to dodge his E range, or you'll use it for if you get stunned, you're in stealth for one and a half second. So Jax won't get those like two free auto attacks off. So that's pretty much how you want to beat Jax jungle. Then we have Kartus. Kartus is really, really strong jungler. Like, he's so oppressive to play against. Technically, Kartus is pretty much a free win for Calyx. Because uh, you can like easily one shot. Versus. So I'd actually put him up here. Um, problem is that you can kill Karthus 10 times. But if Karthus gets to late game, he's still strong. Um, but for the 1v1 aspect, Kalyx will always beat Karthus. The only thing you want to do is just E on top of him, Q and auto him to death. I'll go for a blue smite. I would go for Edge of Night as a third item to um, remove Karthus ult damage. And I would probably evolve QE just to get the bonus distance of the E range, the leap range. And then be able to reset out of again. Like, so you don't get hit by the Qs in his passive. And then you just pop Edge of Night for his ult. And you basically get a free kill without taking too much damage. So that's pretty much like my... Uh, like, my suggestion. Then we have Kane, and Kane is, in my opinion, a stronger version than uh, Calyx. I think Blue Kane is stronger than Calyx since Kane's E got reduced, and Blue Kane just seems really, really strong right now. The only few suggestions I can 
give you guys for fighting Kane is pretty much dodging his W. If he dodges W, you should be able to duel him for the most part. Unless he's fed. If he's fed, Kane doesn't even need to hit any abilities. He'll just straight up kill you. Especially if he's, if he's blue Kane. If you're ahead, I'd go for a blue smite. If you're not ahead, I'd go for a red smite. And... You can duel Kane pre-6. But it's gonna be a 50-50. Like, it's pretty much whoever gets fed first wins. So, uh, I'll definitely look out for Kane and respect Kane if he's fed. If he's not that fed, I'll try to look for a play on him with Q Evolve. And yeah, that's pretty much how you want to play the matchup. Then we have Kindred. Kindred is another free win. You guys are probably surprised by this, because Kindred is a really strong genre, especially on higher elo. So you see that as like God tier pick in like top 5. But the reason why Calyx counters uh, Kindred is because all you want to do as Calyx is just as soon as you hit level 6, you want to go for a blue smite, you can go for tabis if needed. And then you just want to burst Kane, or not Kane, Kindred, sorry. You want to burst Kindred, burst Kindred's ulti, and then as soon as Kindred's ult stops and starts, like it heals, so it basically ends. You for the most part only need one Q when isolated, and Kindred will die. So basically, whatever you want to do, like what you want to do is just use everything to force Kindred's ult. Once you're in Kindred's ult... You can ulti, so you like get stealth and she doesn't get two free auto attacks off, but it doesn't really matter. It's just the fact that if Kindred is isolated in her ult, you only need one Q to kill her. That's pretty much it. So you just want to force Kindred ult and press Q as soon as her ulti ends and you just win the matchup. So that's pretty much how it is. Next up, we have Lee Sin. Lee Sin is another 50-50 matchup for uh, Calyx. Lee Sin will out damage you early game, only because he's a very strong early game jungler. And the reason why a Calyx doesn't really win post 6 is because, for the most part, if you want to kill a Lee Sin, you want to ulti to him, auto Q him, he'll kick you back, you'll E on top of him, and then you'll start doing damage again. Reason why that you won't even kill Lee Sin off that is the fact that Lee Sin has his kick, so if you use E to just like leave on top of him and start doing damage, you just ulti you away, and that's pretty much it. Like, you won't kill him that way. If you ulti on top of him, and you auto Q, then he ults you, and you leap back on him with E, he can still ward jump, or Q jump to whatever, like, he wants. So it's really, really difficult for Calyx to kill Lee Sin, because he has a kit that basically counters you. So, it's only if you're really, really, really fed as Calyx and have a huge lead that you can just straight up one shot listen before he gets his ulti off, then you'll like be able to kill him. So for the most part, I will avoid trying to 1v1 him because it's pretty much a waste of time. And I'll look for a play on laners instead, pretty much. Then we have Master Yi. Um, against Master Yi, I would go for Red Smite. Simply the reason being that Blue Smite only deals true damage and slows, but the slow doesn't work against Mastery's ulti, and the fact that Mastery does a lot of damage. So reducing 20% of his damage output would be really, really good. So basically what you want to do is you want to try to burst Mastery as fast as possible, and while he's in Meditate, I would only stick to using my Q and my auto attacks. Because Masti in his W takes reduced damage, which means that you'll be doing less damage. So using your entire like full damage combo while he reduces 50% of it is basically like a waste of your combo. So I'd only stick to using Qs and autos. And then as soon as he goes out of ult, or out of his W, sorry, I would ult for the stealth and resetting my passive auto attack and Q him again. So that's pretty much how you want to play the matchup. If Massey, for whatever reason, engages on you, you can auto-Q, and then you can go into ulti, and then you can repeat that combo over and over again. But please, for whatever reason, I've seen players waste their damage combo into Massey's W, which is a terrible idea. Hold on to your ulti until his W is ended. Hold on to your ult, W, and E. You can only use Qs and autos while his... How, uh, while he's in meditate, so please just uh, do that. Then we have Wukong. Um, I don't really see Wukong jungle too much. I'm pretty sure he's more played as a top laner. 
But then again, I don't really see him as a top laner either. Um, haven't really played this matchup before. Uh, at least not recently. I probably have before, but not recently. So I don't remember specifically how the matchup goes. Um, but if I had to think like at the top of my mind how this matchup will work, I'll just get Red Smite and Sweeper early game, and I'll just kill him. Um, so I'll probably say the post six. Just go for a Red Smite, go for a Sweeper. So once. Wukong presses W, you'll just sweep and you'll be able to track him down and then you can pretty much just kill him. So that's pretty much pretty much it. Nasus, uh, another top laner. I do know that there was a, like, uh, patch where Nasus Jungle was being played a lot. So if you still see this, I could imagine maybe people still in Loyal play this. Um, all you want to do is pretty much play aggro on him early. You'll win 3-6 because he doesn't have stacks, he doesn't have tankiness or anything. So you can just pretty much straight up kill him. Um, so yeah, do blue smite and just kill him. Once you have a lead, you can basically like one shot him over and over again. Kill him on every single jungle camp. Because he'll just only farm jungle camps, he won't really gank too much. Then you have Nico. Nico is like a top mid laner. I don't really see her as a jungler, so... Yeah, I don't know. Then we have Nidalee. Nidalee is pretty much a free win for Calyx. Simply because Nidalee can only win an early game. If Nidalee doesn't win an early game, Calyx will just completely destroy Nidalee and basically be able to one-shot Nidalee with QE evolve and there's nothing Nidalee can do because you have your E has such a big leap range and your damage output is so insane that Nidalee will only get, be able to use one like Cougar W to keep distance. So you just want to do a blue smite and then you just want to completely like Jump face forward into Nidalee. The only way Nidalee can kill you is if she hits like long range spear. Which should basically like never happen because you have your E to like jump on top of her or dodge it. For whatever reason. So just play aggro on her. And post 6 you just win and then you can just snowball off that. So Next up we have Nocturne. Nocturne is a mechanical matchup. You basically have to play the matchup really patiently 1v1 at least. You basically want to play aggro on him post level 6. So the few mechanical things that you can do is wait for his spell shield to go away. You don't want to waste any abilities into his spell shield because it's just a waste. Just wait it out and then use your Q, W, whatever you want to do. Use that ability. When Nocturne is going for a fear just before he goes, like the fear connects on you. Quickly go into ult, so Nocturne doesn't get his two free auto attacks off. So you're in stealth and he can't hit you. And then once you come out of your ult and you and the fear is almost over, then you can use your Q auto and you can basically like kill him. But you have to be really pacing this matchup and time your abil abilities really well. And hold on to your abilities at the right like moments, pretty much. Then we have Nunu, and uh, Nunu is a really annoying jungler, and probably the strongest tank jungler out there right now. And the reason why you just never win against Nunu as Galax is because he is so incredibly tanky. He has multiple ways of proccing his aftersunk, he has insane healing, pretty good mobility, and a decent amount of CC too, and a shield from his ulti too. So, uh, you'll pretty much never be able to kill Nunu, because he doesn't get low off the first jungle, like clear, as other tanks for the most part do. And he's a straight up tanky from the start of the game, so you pretty much like, never really like, win against Nunu. So you pretty much just want to try to gank, or counter gank, or punish Nunu if he does a mistake. You can't really do too many like, proactive plays against Nunu, because he's just too tanky, like you'll end up dying or getting baited. And his team will like come and collapse on you and just dead, so. Then we have Olaf. Um, I don't really see Olaf too much anymore. He's mainly being played as top lane, but I don't even see him being top lane. Uh, play top lane anymore. Against Olaf. Olaf is an early game jungler, so you pretty much want to avoid him like in the early game. Because he will, if he hits an axe on you, 
He'll basically like run you down. Uh, the best thing you can do if you get caught for whatever reason in early game is try to jump over a wall because Olaf doesn't have any jumps. And for the most part, I don't think Olaf players plays with flash. I think they play with ghost. Uh, so if you jump over a wall, you can like cut a like certain distance and maybe you will escape off that. But if you manage to avoid him throughout the early game and you manage to get level six. I would go for a red smite and then you could start playing acro on him and just use the EQ auto attack into ult, auto attack Q into ult again, auto attack Q and he'll eventually die. So pretty much try to avoid him early game and maybe go for a ganger too but otherwise you'll just power farm and then at level 6 you'll pretty much be able to duel him. Then we have Pantheon. Pantheon is a really difficult jungler to play against, so for the most part I'm saying that he's a counter to Calyx, which he for the most part is. So I've been struggling against Pantheon a lot recently, especially when he was meta a bit earlier this season. But what I learned about playing against Pantheon is the fact that your auto attacks are pretty much useless. Your passive auto attacks are pretty much useless against Pantheon. The only way you can kill Pantheon is through Qs, because his passive will block your auto attacks. So this means that you pretty much, for the most part, the combo for Calyx for dueling is going like EQ auto into ult, then auto Q, and then ult into auto Q. Against Pantheon, you don't want to use the ult auto Q part, you want to ult and then Q, ult and then Q. Reason being that Pantheon will just block your auto attacks and you could get like another ability off instead of that auto attack that will basically get blocked by his passive. So yeah, against Pantheon, be patient, don't use auto attacks, mainly just kill him with Q. And only fight him post 6 because pre 6 you just won't win. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Luckily Pantheon does fall off early game or fall off late game. So even in mid game, if he's not ahead, you'll basically like win the one v one aspect. And if you get late game, he should like eventually fall off. So you'll basically win the one v one anyway. Then we have a Ramis. Um, Ramis is an old tank dollar. He just got nerfed. Ramis doesn't have the fastest or the healthiest clear compared to other. Tank dollar. So you can kill him on first clear on a good invade if you know where he starts and he does like a full clear or yeah he basically gets low after like a few drawing camps and you can punish him for that. At level 6 you'll win with Q evolve. All you want to do is just do blue smite because he's a tank he doesn't really do like too much damage. And then I suggest building black cleaver is really good and last whisper is another really good item uh, that you can buy against Ramis. So Try to kill him on first clear if you know where he starts and then basically like meet him on the other side of the map and then go for the kill there otherwise I'll just wait for Q evolve and then I'll basically like keep on shredding him through Q because the thing is the Calyx doesn't really auto attack too much so his W doesn't really like counter you too much because your Q is just like gonna go straight through um, compared to auto attacks where you like deal less damage and deal damage to yourself and all of this so that's pretty much it. Rek'Sai. Rek'Sai used to be a really free win for Calyx uh, when Rek'Sai had her old, her old ulti, which was the teleportation to tunnel thingy. Now that Rek'Sai has a damaging ulti and conquer is a thing, Rek'Sai can actually duel Calyx when she's ahead. If she's not ahead, Calyx can win. And if Calyx is ahead, Calyx can just straight up kill Rek'Sai. But if Rek'Sai has a lead, Rek'Sai will win without you being able to do anything whatsoever. Maybe a stopwatch will help in the 1v1. I haven't really tried stopwatch early game into Rek'Sai to like get that small comeback or like lead. But uh, yeah, if Rek'Sai is ahead, I wouldn't go for duels. If you're even, you can go for the duels, uh, both pre-6 and post-6. But yeah, it's like a 50-50 matchup. And for the most part, Rek'Sai will just get ahead early game of ganking. So try to counter gank her. Recon jungle, that would be a really good idea. And uh, yeah. Let's move on to the next one. Rengar, the rival matchup. Uh, the Rengar Calyx matchup is actually not 50 50. I think it's slightly Rengar favored, but there are a few things that you can do against Rengar. So, what you want to do against Rengar is for the first 
first part is you want to go for a red smite just to reduce his damage output. The match up basically works like this. If one or the other is more fed, the one who is most fed wins. So the, mo the one who has more items, more gold, will win. If both champions are even, they can both win the 1v1. It basically depends on who jumps on the other one first. So if Kalyx jumps on top of Rengar with his EQ auto attack combo, Kalyx will win. If Rengar starts off his combo either with ult jump or boost jump, Rengar will win. So the few things you can do to uh, win against Rengar is play aggro, try to kill him on his jungle camps. The second thing is, if he has any ferocity stacks, wait for his for his ferocity to fall off and don't let him boost jump on you. Basically, you don't want to let Rengar get his empowered whatever ability he decides to use. If he decides to use his empowered Q, he'll out damage you. If he uses empowered W, he will heal the damage that you just dealt to him. So basically, if he has any ferocity stacks, wait for his ferocity stacks to fall out. So it basically like at zero and then don't let him boost jump on you because then he can maximum get three stacks before you manage to kill him. But if he gets the boost jump on top of you or he ulties, you basically want to try to survive and just jump away as soon as he jump on you. So right as he jumps on top of you, either with boost jump or with ulti jump, just jump away. There's no way you're going to be able to fight him unless of course you're really fed. If you're really fed, you can just kill him pretty much. So. That's pretty much it. Um, then we have Sidrani. Sidrani is another tank donor, for the most part really annoying to deal with. Um, you can win against Sidrani post 6, especially with Black Claver. I tried the Tarzan build recently, and yeah, the matchup seems pretty good uh, for Kalyx at that point. So you can basically win the matchup that way. But pre-6, I don't think... Sidrani gets too low, so just wait for like level 6 Q evolve, maybe wait for Black Claver 2, and then trying to do some stuff. But pretty much drilling a tank for the most part is not really too efficient, you just want to kill enemy laners. So, Shaco. Shaco is another really tough matchup for Kalyx, reason being that Shaco can remove Kalyx isolation damage with his ult. So, you'll win against Shaco. 3-6, all, all you want to do is go for a sweeper, and you want to go for a rat smite, and then you, wanna, then you just want to try to track Shaco down. If you don't manage to kill Shaco or gain a lead uh, on Shaco before level 6, at level 6 you'll just be out dueled, because Shaco has his uh, clone, which will remove your isolation damage, which means that your damage is being cut down to half, and he basically has his clone to deal damage. And he is just gonna be really, really annoying, especially because he also plays with Ignite, so he has a summoner spell that deals bonus damage to you, or true damage, sorry. So he'll just win 1v1s post 6 if you don't have a lead. So you wanna track him down pre 6. So you, you could put him here, but for the most part, even if you get like a lead pre 6, he can still win post 6 because he removes your isolation damage. So that's. Yeah. Pretty sad. I have won the matchup sometimes, so it's not completely unwinnable. But, yeah. Then we have Shyvana. Um, Shyvana is not really being played too much. Uh, not anymore, she doesn't really fit in the current general meta. But all you want to do is pretty much just power farm till level 6, use Q evolve, and then you can pretty much duel Shyvana. So that's pretty much that. Then you have Skarner. Skarner is not a champion that you'll beat post 6. Um, with Q evolve. My best suggestion is going for a blue smite and going for a QW evolve. The blue smite will slow him and give you give you mo bonus movement speed so you can kite him out. And then I'll go for QW evolve because the Q evolve will help you duel him and the W evolve will basically make Skarner useless. So Skarner's main engage is pretty much getting a Rise's glory and then flash ulting on someone and then dragging them down to his like own team. By you W evolving, you'll basically slow him, so his engage is gonna be really, really weak. But if he still manages to get someone with his ult, he's gonna be moving really slowly back to his team, so the person won't be dragged too far back. So, that way, 
you basically counter Skarner really, really big. Other items you can do is, of course, QSS. If he decides to go for a grab on you, you can just QSS and you can just slow him and your team can pretty much turn on him and kill him. So, that's pretty much that. Then we have Silas. Uh, Silas is not really a jungle champion. The only player I see who plays Silas is Gripex. Uh, in like mid diamond, and I think it's like barely 50% win rate he has with it. Uh, and I haven't really played against Silas, so I don't really want to like put him anywhere because, yeah, if you face Silas jungle, let me know and I'll try to figure out how to play against him. But I just have no experience against the Silas jungle as Galax. Then we have Talia. Talia, in my opinion, is pretty much a free win. I know that Talia is really strong there and has, has a really high win rate, but she's so squishy. And you can pretty much kill her very easily. All you want to do is pretty much dodge her W and then just like jump on top of her. As soon as you dodge the W, she has no way of outdueling you and no way of guiding you. So pretty much dodge the W and you win. If she gets ahead early game, you're gonna have a rough time. But for the most part, I basically win this matchup so easily with just jumping on top of her and winning that way. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much that. Then we have Trundle. Trundle, I don't really see too much. If you face a Trundle jungle, you will beat him post 6 with Red Smite. And again, just using the EQ auto into ult auto Q combo uh, and repeating that. So that's that. Then we have Twitch jungle. Twitch jungle is probably the easiest matchup for Calyx. All you want to do is just get blue smite, get boots. And just track Twitch down because he's so squishy. You want to go for a sweeper in case you can't really track him down too easily. And then you pretty much just want to jump on top of him and kill him pretty much. Uh, really, really easy matchup for you to win. Um, so yeah, nothing really to say there. Udyr. Um, for the most part, I'm saying that Udyr is a counter to Calyx, which he is. But I did recently find out a way to win against Udyr post 6. So either he's gonna be placed here or here. Um, for the most part I would say that post 6 you'll win, but basically like here or here. Um, I'll tell you guys how, how to counter him. So, you don't win against Udyr pre-6. Pre-6 Udyr will basically uh, like outduel you. If you're ahead, you can do blue smite, but for the most part I like doing... Actually, for the most part, I like actually doing blue smite, and I'll tell you why. So, when you have Q evolved, you get bonus 50 range, which means that you have more range with your Q than Udyr has with his auto attacks. And Udyr's combo looks like this. He'll go with bear stance, his E, go up and stun you, go into target stance, his Q, and then he'll start auto attacking you, just press the attack. So, whenever Udyr goes for that combo, you can start off with a Q before he hits you with his stun. So you have one Q, like you get one Q off of him before he even gets to stun you. And then you can instantly go into ult. Sometimes you will get stunned, but it won't matter too much because you're in stealth. So once you get out of stealth, the stun is almost over. And sometimes you can even time it so you can Q into R before Udyr even gets an auto off. And then once you come out of ult, you auto Q, and then you ult again, and auto Q, and that way you win. If you don't win that, then you're pretty much gonna lose until level 11, where you just do W evolve, and then again, you slow him, and Udyr is basically just as useless as you are. Um, otherwise, you'll just teamfight group and kite him out, and you can easily do that with W, and then you'll win eventually later on in uh, into the game, so... Then we have Vi. Vi is really, really solid jungler in all elos and is above average and you can never go wrong with Vi. Um, for the most part, you can win against Vi post 6 with Q evolve. But if Vi gets ahead and she's playing with offensive tree, sometimes they are playing with electrocute and if they're ahead, you just die. But sometimes they'll play with aftershock and go tank. But for the most part, just duel her pre-6. If they're playing with aftershock though, there's one tip. Do whatever you can to dodge her Q. If you dodge her Q, she has no way to proc to be proccing her aftershock except ult. But if she insta ults, then you can pretty much just kill her because she just used everything. All her CC, all her engage on you, without dealing too much damage, and that way you'll win. So do whatever you can to 
Dot vice Q if she's playing with Aftershock. Also if she's playing with Electrocute, but yeah. Just dot your Q and you'll win the matchup pretty much. Then we have Volibear, and I haven't really played Volibear. I know he has like 50, 51% win rate or whatever, but I haven't really faced Volley. But I'm pretty sure it's another like post six um, winning matchup where you just go for the Q evolve, as I mentioned a couple of times now in this video. The combo, the EQ auto into ult auto Q, and just repeat that one. If you don't win by that, then wait for level 11, evolve W. Slow him, his engage is gonna be useless, and you can kite him out with your team by grouping. So that's pretty much that. Then we have Warwick. Warwick will win against you 3 6 because he just has too much lifesteal and his fear, and he's just really good at dueling in, in the early game. How you wanna beat Warwick is you wanna go for Q evolve at level 6, and then you pretty much wanna wait for his. Like, you can jump on him at first, but as soon as Warwick presses E, you want to avoid his fear range by ulting and moving back, and then you want to go back in. So as long as you dodge the fear, uh, the fear range, then you should pretty much win the 1v1 matchup with the uh, EQ, ult, ult, yeah, EQ. Yeah, you can basically do the EQ auto attack ult or EQ ult auto attack Q uh, combo. And it'll pretty much win that way. Against Xin Xiao, Xin Xiao will beat you post 6, or pre 6, sorry, but post 6 you'll win. I would go for Red Smite and I would go for Tab Eyes. And again, just use the EQ, Auto, Ulti, Auto, Q combo. Repeat that one. And you'll basically beat Xin Xiao. And then the last one, Sack. Uh, Sack just got reverted with his ult. But uh, I'm pretty sure that you can just kill Sack since he's for the most part gonna be a tank. Uh, so you can kill him 1v1 eventually, post 6. But just be careful that you don't get baited into his team. Uh, or his team like collapsing on you. Because he does have a decent amount of CC still. And yeah, you just won't really win a 1v2 or 1v3 situation no matter what. Unless you're really, really fed. So, this was pretty much it. Thanks so much for watching. My uh, Calyx versus tier list, jungle tier list. Uh, if you have any questions regarding matchups or any junglers that I didn't mention, let me know in the comment section below. If you have any fair questions uh, regarding how to win, if you want me to go even more in detail on how to win these matchups, just let me know in the comment section below or on, or on my live stream, and I will uh, help you guys out. I will have some gameplay of most of these like common played junglers on my Twitch channel. So if you wanna see me, like I'll play these kind of champions or see how I play Caligans with these champions, definitely check out my Twitch. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching guys. If you enjoyed the video, please like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. It would support me a lot. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll see you guys either on my next live stream or in my next YouTube video. So see you everyone.